grade sevens, Helen here, and that means it's time for natural sciences. What is going to be the focus of our lesson today? Well, we're going to be looking at something called conduction. So let's get straight to it. Revising from what we have been learning about, you need to remember that heating happens when our two objects, here's our hotter object, here's our cooler object, are in contact with each other and the heat energy is transferred from the hotter to the cooler object until they are equal in terms of temperature. So we know that. That's what we discovered last time. But now, how does this transfer happen? What is the mechanism of the transfer? What is happening to get the heat energy from one object to another object? Well, there in fact are three ways in which thermal energy can be transferred from one object or substance to another or from the system to the environment. And in this lesson, and in our next lesson, we're going to be looking at the method known as conduction. And over the next few lessons, we will look at other methods and mechanisms as well, called convection and radiation. But today, we are focusing on conduction. So, I have a mystery for you to solve. As we are working with heat transfers, we are going to meet two characters. Here is Chris and here is Chloe, and they're the best of friends. Now, Chris and Chloe were making some delicious soup for supper. Everything was going well until Chris needed to stir the soup. He had left the metal spoon in the pot. As he picked up the spoon, he yelled, wow, that's hot. Chloe passed him a wooden spoon and told him that the wooden spoon wouldn't get as hot as the metal spoon. And he tried it. She was right. So we have some mysteries going on. Why did the metal spoon get hot, but the wooden spoon didn't? So we can understand the stove is hot. We can understand that, of course, the soup is hot. But why did the handle of the spoon get hot? If we think about it, the handle of the spoon was sticking out of the pot. It wasn't in the soup. It wasn't on the stove. How did this part of the handle get hot? And that is our mystery that we have to solve today. And a clue to solving our mystery is, you can't touch me. Let's have a look. Our questions are, how did the metal spoon get hot? Why didn't the wooden spoon get hot? And why do the metal handles and the lid of the pot also get hot? And one way Remember, we said there are three, but the first way that we're going to talk about is heat energy is transferred by the process of conduction. Now, here is a little uh, analogy or a story to help us to understand what conduction is. Have you ever stood in a line with your friends? And the first person in the line, and you're all holding hands, because that is a very important thing about conduction, is touch or contact. The first person squeezes the hand of the second person. And the second person then squeezes the hand of the third person. And the little squeeze is passed all the way down to the end. And finally, the fifth person in the line says, I felt it. All right. That is exactly how conduction works. So I want you to think of your passing on of the little squeezes in our row of children. And now I want you to think about 
particles making up a substance. So heat energy is transferred to an object. So here, this first little particle is now getting heat energy. And its heat energy increases. So it starts moving and it bumps into particles around it. So the particles have more kinetic energy, they move and vibrate faster, and they actually start bumping in to each other. And just like the little hand squeeze is passed, they start passing their heat energy on to whichever other particles they touch or bump into. And because the particles continue to moving, because our heat source is continual, the soup is on the stove all the time, there's an endless supply of heat energy that is simply transferred. Do you see that our patch of heating is getting bigger and bigger and bigger? So let's translate that to solving the mystery of how did the metal spoon get hot? Well, the soup is hot. The metal spoon is cold. When Chris put the metal spoon into the hot soup, let's imagine that there it is, some of the heat energy from the soup, this is our metal spoon, transferred the heat energy to some particles of the metal spoon that were down here where the soup was hottest. The metal particles in the spoon that were in contact with the hot soup start to vibrate. And they vibrate faster and faster as they are getting more and more kinetic energy. Remember, kinetic means movement. So as these particles get more and more kinetic energy, they vibrate faster and they bump into or collide with their neighboring particles. And these collisions then transfer the energy from particle to particle. And what we're seeing is the area of the spoon that is hot is now spreading. And that heat energy is going to spread by conduction all the way up the handle of the spoon. So eventually, and it doesn't happen instantaneously, we've got to wait until the little particles have transferred their heat energy. Eventually, the spoon feels hot, even though it's not touching the soup, this part of the handle is not touching the soup. It's not touching the stove. But now that spoon is hot. And it's because our little particles have conducted heat energy as they received it by touching and bumping into other uh, particles. Now, why do the metal handles and the lid of the pot get hot? Why didn't the wooden spoon get hot? Well, the lid is on top of the pot and the handles are high up the pot. So we've learned that if this was the spoon, we're going to see a transfer of heat energy. But surely the pot itself is going to conduct the heat energy up to its own handles. So if this now is pot and not spoon, we're going to see that the part of the pot that is in contact with the stove is going to get hot. It is going to pass its heat energy on to parts of the pot that are not in direct contact with the stove. And so the particles of the pot are going to continue to gain heat energy, to vibrate quite a lot more and to pass this kinetic energy 
on to other particles. When the top of the pot eventually also gets hot, it of course will transfer simply by conduction our heat energy from the particles of the pot to the particles of the lid. So why do the metal handles and the lid of the pot get hot? It's due to heat energy conduction and it's due to particles in the pot or in the metal of the pot vibrating and that vibration is kinetic energy and because they vibrate faster and faster they transfer that kinetic energy to neighboring particles they're transferring it and we find that other parts of the hot pot like the handles and the lid are going to start getting warmer and warmer even though the lid, for example, is not in contact with the stove or even the hot soup for that matter. Why didn't the wooden spoon get hot? Well, this is a mystery for a little bit later, but I want you to think about it. Some materials like metal are better conductors than other materials like wood. We are going to get to this problem as I say, in a, in, a, in a later lesson, but we need to understand that not all materials conduct heat in the same way. So summarizing now, what have we learned about conduction? Conduction, there must be contact. There must be something that is touching in order for heat energy to be conducted. So we Think about our story about the children holding hands and passing on the squeeze. We know that heat energy is conducted between objects that are touching. And that is because the little particles are going to vibrate and they're going to pass on that kinetic heat energy to neighboring particles. But the metal spoon conducted well. The wooden spoon conducted poorly because it didn't get hot. So we know that not all materials conduct heat in the same way. We will get back to this problem. Solids conduct heat energy much better than gases or liquids. And why is this? It's because the particles are closer together in solids. So if we go back to this picture, we see that our particles are organized in a very strict order in a solid. Remember that in a liquid, our particles have much more space between them and therefore they can flow. But in a gas, our particles are far apart. So it's much harder if this little particle is vibrating to pass that energy or to bump into another particle because of the distance between the particles. So that is why we say solids are excellent conductors of heat energy and we need to find another way that gases and liquids are able to conduct heat energy because their particles are further apart. So it doesn't matter how much they vibrate. There's nothing close to them to bump against or to make collisions with. It would be like another child standing over here. His hand is too far away from that child's hand. He can't feel the squeeze. So we need to possibly in our next lesson search for a method of making heat transfers in gases and liquids because conduction is going to be super for solids but it's not going to work so well with gases and liquids. So I hope you'll join me next time when we have another mystery to solve about heat energy transfer. For today, goodbye.